So by now, I've played in almost every single Vegas poker room, at least the major ones. And I gotta say, my favorite one is probably this one right here. This is Resorts World, the newest property on the Strip, a place we've been to before on the vlog, but just once. And like I said, I've played in a ton of different spots around Vegas, and I gotta say, this one is right up there. It's a really nice room, everything is brand new. They got really nice cards, tables, chairs, the staff are great. I also really like these kind of chips that they got. I don't really know how to describe them, but they're like the really sharp edge, like you guys really give a shit about that. But as you know, or maybe you don't, unless you saw the last few vlogs, I'm in Vegas for a month, grinding the cash games and the occasional World Series of Poker Tournament, and obviously documenting my journey and bringing you guys along for the ride. Today's stop is Resorts World 510, which is a $3,000 max, pretty decent sized 510. And I'm just gonna be here all day, sharing those interesting hands with you guys. And also, I've been playing online poker almost every night. Uh, on Club GG. So if you guys are interested on joining, feel free to hit the link in the description box. It's really easy. Myself and Rampage Poker are hopping on there pretty frequently. And they have all the way from low stakes, like 50 cent a dollar, all the way up to like 5, 10, no limit. So a wide variety of games to pick from. If you guys want to cross paths with me on the virtual felt, that's the spot to do it. But anyway, enough of that. Let's get into the hands. All right, guys, here we go again, playing some 510 No Limit Texas Hold'em. What a fun game this is, huh? Here at Resorts World, the buy-in is 500 to 3,000. I sit down with $3,000, and in the first interesting hand, we look down at 5-4 of hearts in the small blind. There's a $30 open from late position, button calls, and now it's on me. Considering that the raise came from late position and the button only called, it's very possible that neither of these guys has a strong hand, so I decide to go for the raise. $150 to go. Original razor folds, but the button calls again. We go to a flop of Jack Jack 5 with one heart. I think the best play here is to mostly bet small and occasionally check. This time I decide to check. He checks it back and we go to the nine of hearts on the turn, giving us a flush draw to go along with our pair. I check again and this time he bets $100. Not really sure if a raise accomplishes anything here, so I just call and we see the three of hearts on the river, giving us a fairly disguised flush. I check it to him again and he continues betting, this time for $250. I've got five cards of the same suit, so I'm for sure going for a raise. If we get re-raise, it's a pretty easy fold anyway, so I make it $700. He ends up just letting it go and we win the first pot of the night. At this point, we all decide to turn on the straddle, music to my ears, so the rest of the session will be 5, 10, 20. In this next hand, a player in early position opens to 45, Someone calls behind him, and then it gets to me in the straddle with pocket eights. I make the call, so we go three ways to a delicious looking flop. Eight three deuce with a flush draw. I check, but sadly it checks around. Turn is the four of diamonds, which is a little concerning, as we now lose to hands like ace five or six five suited. But for some reason I still feel like no one has anything here, so I decide to just check again and hope that someone stabs at this pot. Initial Razor checks as well, but luckily the player behind him now bets $70. Obviously a raise here is totally fine, but my read on this guy is that he either has a marginal hand or just air, so I decide to keep all his hands alive with a flat call. River improves us even more, giving us a full house. I check a third time and he bets again, this time $180. I think this River bet just confirms my hunch that he's bluffing, because if he had a weak pair, he would probably just check back and try to get to showdown. But of course, can't do anything except raise and hope that he does have something strong. Unfortunately, when I make it 800, he quickly mucks his cards. Still, can't complain about a full house, right? At this point, I fold for about an hour before finally raising queen six suited on the button. Somewhat optimistic to play these cards, but at least my table image is clean right now. 
So I make it $60 and only the straddler calls. Flop comes Jack 9-5 with a diamond and two spades. He checks, I bet 100, and he makes the call. Turn card is a good one. It's the 10 of clubs, improving us to a straight draw. However, this card could easily connect with a lot of the hands that he's calling the flop with, so I decided to just check it back and try to realize some equity. River is a blank though, the five of hearts. I'm expecting him to just check and win at showdown with a jack or perhaps a nine once I give up. But interestingly enough, he leads for $140 now. Okay, so I'll be the first to say that folding queen high here is perfectly reasonable, of course. Let's just get that out of the way. But I think his river bet opens some possibilities for us. I mean, if he had one pair, like a jack or nine, why would he even bet? And if he had a really strong hand, like a flopped set or whatever, wouldn't he check raise on the flop? So to me, this river bet feels like either a weak value bet or just a bluff, like Miss Spades or Queen 10, for example. Now, the catch is, of course, that we have Queen High, so even a lot of those bluffs are beating us. And for that reason, I think a small raise here will accomplish what we're looking for, which is a nice easy fold. So I make it $350, no need to risk a ton of money against the hands we're targeting. Now my opponent thinks it over for a bit and eventually folds. Kind of a weird hand, but happy to get the job done with the unorthodox bluff this time. In the next one, there's an early position open to 60. Player in middle position calls and then it gets to me on the button with ace-queen offsuit. Could go either way here between calling and raising. This time, I decide to put in the re-raise, and both of my opponents make the call. Now, at this point, unfortunately, my camera stopped recording because it ran out of storage, so just bear with me for the rest of the hand. Don't worry, it gets sorted out right after. Anyway, we go three ways to a flop, which comes down an absolute dream. Queen, queen, eight, rainbow. Checks to me, I bet a quarter pot, and only the initial raiser in early position makes the call. Turn is a king, and now he leads for $400. Nothing to do but call, so that's what I do, and we see the jack of diamonds on the river. Not my favorite run out, as now we're losing to king queen and queen jack. So when he bets $900, I decided to just call, since we're probably not getting called by worse, except maybe queen 10 suited, which there's only one possible combination of now. Anyway, we end up winning against an interestingly played pocket 10s. Moving along with the camera back in action, I open ace jack offsuit to 60 in early position and get raised by the straddle to 210. My hand isn't really strong enough to call here so I think the best course of action is to mostly just fold and sometimes put in the re-raise. This player started the hand with around 4000 so plenty left behind and we have position so you guys can probably guess where this one is headed. That's right, I put in another raise making it 700 to go. I'm hoping this puts him in a tough spot with hands like ace king, queens, jacks, etc. You know, all the pretty good but not amazing hands. And it seems like that's what we're up against because he decides on a flat call after thinking it over for a bit. Heads up to a nice flop of king four deuce with two diamonds. This is a good board because all his big pocket pairs are going to hate that king and him holding ace king just became less likely. On the other hand, I could easily still have aces, kings, ace king myself, so when he checks to me, I continue with a $480 bet. He's not done with it just yet though, and makes the call. I somewhat expected this, as he's probably not going to fold a pocket pair to a single bet, but I'm optimistic that we'll get it done on the turn. However, we end up getting bailed out when the ace of clubs appears out of nowhere. It is an action killing card though. He checks again and now I just check back, although I guess a bet seems fine too. River is the seven of clubs, he checks for a third time. I don't know, maybe we can go for some super thin value, but probably more likely we get trapped by ace king than get called by worse. So I just check back and we win against pocket queens, so that's cool. Later on, I look down at queens myself on the button. There's a late position open to 60, I make it 180 and he calls. Flop comes down 6-3 deuce with two hearts. Not really the best flop for me, but when he checks, I decide to bet anyway. If we get raised, well, we'll just cross that bridge when it comes. He ends up just calling though, so we go to a turn which is the queen of hearts. Interesting spot when he checks here. We can either bet small or check it back. I think a bet is a little better, but this time I check it and we see the ace of diamonds on the river. Once again, my opponent checks though, so definitely going for value now. 
I place a bet of $420 and he calls. I show it and we take down another healthy pot. Things are going well. Let's see if we can keep going with Ace Jack again this time. There's a $60 open from the player on my right who was playing a ton of hands. So I decided to make it 180 and just get this pot heads up in position. And that's exactly what happens. Everyone else folds and he makes the call. Flop is another good one. Jack for three with two hearts. He checks. I have top pair, so I bet. And he makes the call. Turn kind of sucks though, the five of hearts. He easily could have called the flop with the flush draw, so when he checks now, I just check it back. And the river card is interesting. The nine of hearts, putting four hearts on the board. And this time my opponent leads out for $240. And we've got a decision to make here. Not having a heart in my hand, I think a call here would be a disaster. However, I could very easily have the ace of hearts or even the king of hearts given how this one played out. Aces, kings, ace king, ace jack, king jack. There's a bunch of hands that I would have played this exact same way that end up rivering a big flush. Plus, if we want to raise those hands for value, it's probably a good idea to throw in some occasional bluffs as well. So that's what I decide to do this time by raising it up to $700. I'm hoping this puts him in a difficult spot with a pocket pair that has a heart or perhaps a hand like queen 10 of hearts, eight seven of hearts, you get the idea. Now my opponent goes in the tank for a while before ultimately deciding on a call. Damn it. Nice call, nice call. Moments later, we decide to play a $50 double board PLO bomb pot in which I get dealt 10 10 jack 5 and flop a boat on one board and an over pair on the other. Seems good to me, so I bet 100 bucks and get called by two players. Turns are the ace and nine of spades, and now the small blind bets $600. Raising seems like a bit of an overplay, so I decided to just call, and the player behind me calls as well, so still three of us going to the rivers, which are the deuce of clubs and king of diamonds. Now the small line bet's super small, $100. At this point, I'm fairly confident we have the best hand on the top board, which is a good situation here because we're up against two opponents who could be playing the bottom board. So I decided to raise it up, making it $1,200 to go. And somewhat surprisingly, both of these guys make the call. I turn it over and we're up against 6-3 from the player behind me and 9-3 from the small blind. So I win half the pot and the small blind wins the other half. Kind of confusing, but overall a good result as we end up profiting around a thousand bucks in this one. Moving along to the last hand of the night. And to preface this one, you should know that I had been experiencing some more card death, folding for about an hour and a half before finally getting involved again. Anyway, there's an early position open to 60, and it gets to me in the straddle looking down at King 8 suited. Calling is the preferred route, raising occasionally was the selected route this time, I make it $240 to go and the initial raiser makes the call. This player was pretty straightforward and had also noticed my lack of aggression for the past few hours, so when the flop comes 10-6 deuce with a club, my plan is to continue betting until he folds. Pretty advanced stuff, huh? It seems like 170 isn't enough though, so when we see the six of spades on the turn, I size up to $720 this time. Probably just going to shut it down if this one doesn't work, but luckily, after thinking about it for a minute, he lets it go. I will say, doing stuff like this often is not a good idea, so just bear in mind that I don't show you guys the other hundred times where I don't attempt a kamikaze bluff like this. But anyway, shortly after this hand, I decided to rack up and call it a session, and I hope you guys enjoyed the hands. Well guys, that went about as good as you could hope for in a Las Vegas 5-10 game. Also, for anyone out there who's ever won money in a cash game session without having to add on, just know that you ran good, okay? And that was the case for myself today. Bottom line was in for 3,000, out for 
forget the exact amount, but I ended up winning three or 4,000 bucks. I think I played like almost 12 hours and not one difficult spot. That's a good day. But anyway, that's it for today, guys. Plenty more cash game sessions left to be reported for the month. I think I'm still gonna play in three or four other properties. Also, the WSOP tournament's coming up, so plenty more videos coming. Stay tuned for those. Subscribe if you're interested in that. If you watched all the way to the end, I appreciate it. I appreciate all the support as always, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.